Thanks for clicking on to the Tuesday edition of Logan's European Outlook. In today's video, I want to look at a little bit at the sea surface temperatures, and I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail, or I'm going to try and not anyway uh, go into a huge amount of detail, because I think the next global weather and climate report is going to be looking at um, you know, the, uh, the the temperatures that we've been seeing across the across the planet, actually, um, in uh, over a recent days, weeks, and even months, and, you know, really when you look at the, these incredible, uh, incredibly warmer than normal sea surface temperatures across the northern ocean basins, there is no surprise um, that we've seen the very warm summer, um, not just across the UK or Europe, but actually across many portions of Asia, as well as parts of North America as well. You know, the majority of Earth's land is to the north of the equator, and of course, when you've got warm waters surrounding these land masses combined with drier than normal soil and um, you're going to see a lot of heat and that has been of course the case but the uh, cooling across the western indian ocean cool across of course the central and southeastern portion of the pacific ocean has led to temperatures um below normal um down across more southern portions of the planet here so you can see the, the big contrast uh, warmer than normal across the top cool than normal down towards the Antarctic and the sea surface temperatures uh, kind of represent somewhat uh, the atmosphere but it's interesting actually how we've seen a significant cooling actually in the last seven days uh, across Earth's ocean basins here and definitely see there's more blue on that compared to, to you know yellows oranges or reds and um, that is quite an interesting uh, signal. Obviously, seven days, a very short space of time, but nonetheless, it's interesting to see that, you know, generally speaking, based on this uh, information, uh, Earth's oceans have cooled somewhat in recent times. And uh, of course, the weekend just gone uh, was actually the coolest weekend globally of the year so far, and that was, um, a tweet put out by uh, London and uh, England Weather on Twitter. Uh, some quite interesting stuff uh, from him. But uh, certainly plenty of heat to speak about. Uh, we are going to see the continuation of temperatures warming across particularly eastern portions of the continent, but as well as that across the west, where we're seeing more 40s across Siberia. We're seeing mid to upper 20s across England. Um, and of course, we're seeing upper 20s, low 30s across uh, France, low countries, western portions of Germany. This is the battleground in between showers, thunderstorms, very stormy conditions breaking out between these two very warm air masses. Um, but it's actually interesting as well, by the way, see when we look at the, um, the, the hurricane season so far, it has been uh, very quiet, so much so that it's the quietest quietest start to an Atlantic hurricane season in 30 years and it's interesting 30 years ago um pretty much now um is the time that hurricane andrew developed in the atlantic basin and of course eventually struck south florida as a category 5 monster hurricane uh, but it's interesting how back in in 1992 um we had an exceptionally quiet start to the hurricane season and then of course Andrew um, changed all that um, but it's you know it makes me wonder actually with the, the amount of heat built up across the the far northern ocean basins I think it kind of almost distorts the the wind flow within the tropics and therefore um, you know it, it kind of suppresses uh, tropical development so to speak and I think when you've got of course uh, you know, you have to look back and, and say to yourself, what what is the purpose of tropical cyclones? It's about uh, taking heat out of the tropics and redistributing uh, it towards the temperate regions here. But when you've got exceptionally warm, warm weather up across the more uh, mid and high latitude region, there is there in a sense, tropical um, cyclones are not necessary because we don't need to remove heat from the tropics. Tropics are actually at even slightly below average temperature wise at the moment we've got a lot of heat further north so there's that distortion in temperature but also you're going to distort the the wind flow pattern the trade winds and, and whatnot so in a sense it's not been necessary 
for the atmosphere to produce tropical cyclones uh, up until now. But the Manjulian oscillation has got a lot to do with that as well. And um, when you look at the Manjulian oscillation through the month of July as well as August, it has been uh, quite often favouring large-scale sinking over the Atlantic. That has done two things. It has suppressed the tropical Atlantic in terms of activity. It's also suppressed tropical activity, by the way, around the world. Every ocean basin has uh, seen very subpar um, you know, productivity, with the exceptions of the eastern portion of the Pacific Basin. But that uh, large-scale sinking over the Atlantic suppresses the tropics, also enhances the heat further north as well. So that is, has has played a significant role, the Manjulian Oscillation, during the course of this summer. And it's going to be interesting as we go uh, towards the end of August that we start to see the greens uh, starting to appear on the chart. So enhanced upward motion. And of course, when you've got uh, sea surface temperatures that are in the uh, upper 20s to low 30s, over the western portion of the main development region, in through the Caribbean and uh, within the Gulf of Mexico as well. You've got plenty of fuel for these systems to tap once they develop. And I think with the Manjulian Oscillation becoming a lot more favourable, it therefore means that we have to look towards the potential for systems coming off Africa, off that African easterly jet, and uh, within the international uh, international intertropical convergence zone, then you've got um, the recipe for development here. Now, if we look at this chart here of weathercharts.com, this is of the GFS model, uh, right at the very bottom, I know it's a little bit messy to see, but right at the very, very bottom, you can see the intertropical convergence zone. And that is, of course, a conga line of thunderstorms that move east to west, out of Africa, into the Atlantic Basin. And of course, when the environment is right, you then see these systems developing into closed warm core circulations. And as they cross the Atlantic, again, if wind shear is light, you've got um, you know convergence um, in the low levels um, and divergence aloft, especially when you've got high pressure over top of these tropical systems that can kind of vent these systems, then you've got the development and the, the all the ingredients coming together, so to speak. But as I play through this um this loop, you can see the systems coming off Africa. There's a couple of rather meaty looking features spawning off the African continent. And the modeling is with the Manjulian oscillation becoming more favorable, um, you know, um a kind of more large scale upward motion you're seeing the potential uh, for development here and you can see that some of these features are now starting to appear on the models to develop we've got a system here out over the open tropical atlantic we've also got another feature behind it we've not seen this up until now and uh, certainly this is going to get quite interesting i think as we go towards the early portion of September. Now you notice here that we've got a weakness in the mid-Atlantic ridge over the western portion of the basin. So therefore, with the area of high pressure extend from the central Atlantic to the north of the system, all the way back towards the British Isles, watch these systems. Now if there's a gap within the atmosphere, these systems will simply ride around the outer periphery of that, that mid-Atlantic ridge and around it and up into the North Atlantic and up and interacting with the mid-latitude pattern. Of course, winds within the tropics go from east to west. And then, of course, in the mid-latitudes, they catch the jet stream and then they're getting driven west to east towards the UK and Europe here. That is, you know, in simplified terms, of course. But notice here how the latest run of the GFS has this system running around that area of, of high pressure we've got a trough we've got an area of low pressure dropping into the eastern portion of the united states that stops that system from uh, continuing to move east or west should i say and rides around the top of that height these features by the way that get into the middle attitude pattern can have significant influence both in a good way and a bad way 
on our weather here in the west of Europe here. So we're going to have to watch this setup here. It may potentially enhance disturbed weather, unsettled weather, low pressure driven weather towards the early portion of September here. With the Manjulian oscillation becoming more favorable, favorable for the tropics, this in turn could lead to more unsettled weather across the British Isles but a lot of things have to come together and it is a lot more complicated than what I'm saying so I'm just trying to make it as simple as possible for you to be able to understand what I'm talking about but certainly things are quite interesting when it comes to what's going on tropics have been suppressed they're at the quiet start in Atlantic hurricane season in 30 years I don't think there's any coincidence that how warm the northern ocean basins are that's distorted both the temperature and wind flow pattern within Earth's system. Uh, and of course, it is also led to a buildup of heat uh, within the continents of the Northern Hemisphere here. So you can see really what's going on when it comes to the overall weather pattern. But certainly the tropics drive the Northern Hemispheric pattern. We are starting to see changes taking place as we go from late summer towards the early autumn and we'll watch this space in terms of what kind of weather pattern we can expect to see with very very warm waters by the way stacked up within the, the northern portion of the Atlantic Basin wouldn't be entirely surprised if we have a warmer than normal autumn overall but that's just a kind of off the cuff uh, thought at this moment in time so Keep it right here anyway on marfolinweather.com and YouTube as well. I do appreciate the fact that you, you've watched today's video as always. And I will hopefully have either tomorrow or the following day a global weather and climate report. And we'll talk more about uh, the potentials with the, the sea surface temperatures, the Man Julian oscillation. I'm going to start talking about solar cycle as well, by the way, because that is something that I'm really wanting to hone in on in the next wee while is the solar cycle ocean temperatures uh, and the the potential of, of what we could expect potentially during the, the you know the late autumn and into the early portion of the winter season so a lot of things going on at the moment keep it right here and i do appreciate you watching enjoy the rest of your day bye for now